And good morning, everyone. This is Pete and Dorcas Masipta with you on this Sunday, September 4th, 2022. We're Cornerstone Assembly Independent Pentecostal right here in Cambridge, Maryland. And we're also Masipta Ministries. We meet at a church called Third River at 415 Academy Street in Cambridge, Maryland, usually in Sanctuary 2. I like to call it the catacombs. Uh, but uh, we're not affiliated with the river. We just rent from them. And so we meet there tonight at 7 p.m. Come on out. And also this Thursday, we continue our study in the Lamed stanza of Psalm 119. Uh, this past recording on Thursday, I wish you were there. Uh, but we talked about different things, basically, that people might have questions about, basically. Because when you see the first verse of that stanza, verse 89, it says, God... Forever, O Yavah, your word is settled in heaven. And some people might say, why is there a different translation? We talked about that. And then why are there uh, some translations that leave out some words or put some in, however you want to call it? Uh, we talked about that. And uh, so you listen to that, and we talk about that. And I'm just, I'll tell you right now, I'm just satisfied with using it. something that is based upon the received text. And I, I can add more to that, but I won't. Basically, what you find, basically now, what you find in the King James. We use New King James on these broadcasts mainly. When she reads it, she's reading for the New King James. Uh, before I continue, I uh, had a little trouble before we got live here as far as getting on camera and all that because once again, Facebook has messed up, and I cannot share this on my pages. Uh, I had to manually manually share it on the Cornerstone page that we have. But I could just put it on her uh, profile page, and of course ours, mine, and then. Uh, but I couldn't automatically just shift it over to, or send it to, or share it with uh, my Sapphire Streams page, the Sister Ministries page, and so on, and also uh, what's it called Friendly Chat Dorchester, uh, which I usually do. That's why there's like a you know perhaps a five-minute gap by the time we start the stream and we get live here because I'm sharing all of that stuff. But thanks to Facebook, they changed something once again. I'm going to have to write to them and say, why did you do that? That, that, that takes a lot of time. I'll, I'll share it later on with um, uh, Friendly Chat and also the Ministries and also Sapphire Streams page that I have. So we'll share it that way. Uh, but right now, let's share the Word of God. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sure beats Facebook any day. <laughs> All right. Amen. Wish sure that light would be okay, but no, it needs a glow on it and a sheen and stuff like that. And, uh, be helpful for me to read. But anyhow, okay, we're going to go to, to 1 Peter this morning. And she'll be reading in a moment from 1 Peter chapter 1, going from verse 24 over to chapter 2, verse 3. Taking that context, we should really take more from chapter one and more from chapter two. But at the same time, we're not going to do that. Let me start off with this this way. There's all sorts of Christians out there at, at different levels. Okay, there's some that just got saved, and there's some that've been saved for a while. But the length of time kind of doesn't matter. What matters is that we mature, that we grow in Him. Now, there's a lot of mature Christians out there, and I thank God for that. But the thing is, even though we might consider ourselves a mature Christian, of course, you, you know, mature Christians also realize that they need to continue to mature. Let me say that, okay? You don't reach a plateau and, hey, I'm at, I'm at the top here, buddy. No, you keep on growing in Christ. But let's say for those that are mature in Christ, they're growing you know, older in Christ, and they're, they have developed the Christ life, life in their <laughs> life, the Christ life life in their life, and uh, they've developed that at all, we still should consider ourselves babes in Christ to a degree, always wanting the pure milk of the Word. And so we're going to be looking at that one verse over in First Peter this morning, but we want to give you the context for that. And uh, I was reading that uh, when I would preach this from the pulpit, which where I have more time, essentially you could say, uh, we could just start a chapter one and do chapter two. And that's good because a lot of people don't read their Bibles. You know, so for a congregation, I'd have them sit there and we will read out loud. Or, you know, uh, not just one person reading, but maybe 
responsive reading. You know, is get them active, okay? Let them read this. This is the problem out there in the body of Christ. People don't read it, and if they do read it, they don't believe it. And I have to wonder where you are in the Lord. I'm not being critical, I'm not being judgmental. As a pastor, I must be concerned about everyone's situation, including my own. But now we're going to go over to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 uh, to chapter 2, verse 3. She will be reading it in the New King James, and you will see it on your monitor with the American King James Version, modified by yours truly, because I took out the old English stuff in there, and I also altered one word. I didn't alter it. I took the better translation of it. But anyway, go ahead. Read First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 to chapter 2, verse 3. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as a flower of the grass. The grass withers, and it flowers, flower that falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. All right, maybe I didn't alter that one word. I, I put in there what the uh, American King James has, uh, long for the spiritual milk, which is without guile. And I looked up that word, and that's the, that's the only time that Greek word is used in the New Testament. And that's it. But it does mean pure, okay? All right, it does mean pure, so consider it pure in that case. We have all that before you because I believe, and I believe, I know, you can see right there, the Holy Spirit is drawing a contrast through the Apostle Peter between people and the Word of God. <laughs> you know, you look at verses 22 to uh, 24, and there's a contrast there. Verse 22, well, 23 and 24, or well, 24 mainly, uh, all flesh is grass, and the glory of man as the flower of the grass. Uh, the grass withers and the flower falls away. And by the way, it does say that in the Greek falls away. Now, some translations have fell. You could, all right, that's okay. But the idea of falling there, okay, just, it, it's all earthly, right? But then it says here, but the word of Yavah, and I'm now using the terminology that you would find in the Old Testament because that's where it's quoting from. But the word of Yavah endures forever. Now, this is the word which by which the gospel or glad tidings. Does this say glad tidings on your monitor? And this is the word, but uh, glad, good tidings, good tidings. And by the way, that is the meaning of that Greek word. So gospel means glad tidings, good news. That's what that means. Amen. And it is good news because we don't have to stay sinners and we don't have to stay damned. Hallelujah. Christ Live the life that we need to live, and he has sacrificed himself, uh, took our punishment upon the cross, so we don't have to face punishment. The thing is, we've got to agree to that, enter into that, commit to that, and, uh, and this is how you really believe. Not just in your head, but in your heart, and it's expressed by how you live and how I live. Now, if you look closely, you will see that verse 2 is colored in different colors, okay? Uh, I think the first one is a pretty light blue, the second one is a light yellow, and the third color is a purple. And that's the sections we're going to look at. Once I take that away, you will see once again uh, how this breaks down. But the first thing that we want to do, in fact, I'll probably break away. Well, let me read that first part. All right, the first part of verse 2 of chapter 2 of First Peter reads, as newborn babes, amen, as newborn babes. So let's break away from that now, and you see what we're going to point to, and uh, it will be to your right here, and here it goes. Over to your right, the first one is recognizing our condition, recognizing our condition. Without Christ, we're helpless, okay? 
and we are vulnerable. You look at a little baby, they're helpless, right? They need to eat, they need to be changed, they need to be washed, they need to be, be, need to be protected and so on, right? We're helpless, okay? And so when we get saved, we're like a newborn baby. We need that protection. We need changed. Hallelujah. We need to be fed. And of course, if you ever watch a, a newborn infant look for their food, okay, they are very hungry. They just move their head back and forth so fast. They want that milk right away. Amen. So, and they mean business too. If they don't get it, what? They, <laughs> they start crying. Uh, when people have to switch the bottle sometimes, you know, uh, they see that they're working on a bottle. <laughs> they want that bottle. You know, they're hungry. And they don't know it's, they're going to get it eventually. But it's, all they know is that they're hungry. Now, even though we've been saved a long time, we should always stay hungry for more Jesus. Okay, that's why I picked out that one song from Christian Central Academy up in New York State, Western New York State up that way, beautiful music and all, beautiful lyrics that fit right in uh, with our message and all, and so I want more, but we'll get to that shortly, of course, but, you know, you're vulnerable, you're also weak, a baby can't fight back, a baby can't defend themselves, right, or anybody else, they're weak, they're completely weak, uh, their muscles have not been developed yet, and so completely weak, and this is how we are, and uh, keep that in mind, too, even though you and I and others, too, perhaps, have been in the Lord for so many years, okay? Don't start thinking you can stand on your own strength, because without the Lord, you're weak as a baby. This, once again, goes into meekness. We can get perturbed and upset about a lot of things, okay? Some which are going to pass, you know? And some, most will pass all the air. Most of the time, it's politics that people get upset about. I know the United States is important, and you should love this country, you should love the Constitution, and you should love the freedom that we have. I would rather live here than any other country in the world, okay? Even though we have our problems. Every country's got its problems, okay? Even Switzerland right now, the neutral country, they're out in Europe, right? But So uh, they're, they're going to be affected by this war in Ukraine. Uh, and also, they got their problems. They probably have other problems, too. Uh, out in Switzerland. So I would rather live here besides I know some of the laws <laughs> and all that. I want to move this down just a little bit. We're just up a little bit too high. Ah, okay. And so, but remember, without the Lord, you're weak. And this is where meekness comes in, that we always depend upon his strength and his direction and his power I like the old song, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That's taken from Zechariah, I think, chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken, if not 4. But it's taken from one of those chapters of Zechariah. That had been the theme of the Pentecostal Evangel for many years. I don't know if the Pentecostal Evangel is still being printed or developed and so on uh, in the Sons of God. And that had been the theme. That's a great theme. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. It says Yavah, not just the Lord. There's a difference, my friend. Okay. And so we're needy. We're needy all the time. And now, once again, here's another paradox in God's word. We got all we need, and we're fine, and all. And we have power and strength of the Lord. But still, we need to recognize our need of God all the time. So just because I got saved in 1970 doesn't mean I can, you know, walk away and do what I want and all this sort of stuff. But why, if I want to get drunk, you know, or something like that, I'm glad I got away from that mess. That's expensive stuff. Goodness. <laughs> I got saved at 17 before I became an adult, you know. And uh, if I had become an adult, you know, and, and not been saved, I'd be, I'd be out there buying, you know, whiskey and brandy and really wine at all. And a few other things, just try them out. And all I might be dead by now, but you hey, if you look at our refrigerator, we got grape juice. I'd rather have jet, that orange tangerine, give me that fresh water, give me that, amen. Prune juice, too, that's good, too. No, don't worry about that, okay? That's overrated, basically. And all, and it's very tasty stuff, too. Very tasty. So, but you know, we have to realize that even though we 
like John the Apostle puts it over in uh, First John, I think it's chapter 2, I have written to you children and then young men and fathers. I did a whole article on that one time. You know, the older ones, I would say, those that have been in the Lord for some time. And we always need the Lord, no matter if we are a newborn baby of Christ, whether we are intermediate, like a young person, like it says over in uh, 1 John chapter 2, or if we are a, you know, daddy, you could say, watch that. The Word of God, Jesus says, call no man your father, okay? I know John uses that term by the Holy Spirit over in 1 John chapter 2. But you got to be careful about that, okay? Be very careful. Uh, so, but we have to recognize our condition. That's number one over here, number one. And then number two, resorting to action. So let's go back to our text again so you see that. And that's going to be the words coming on your screen here shortly. Uh, that say, uh, desire the pure milk of the word. Now, in the translation before you, Long for, that's okay. Yeah, long for the, the spiritual milk, which is without guile. That's okay. That 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 translation is okay. okay. Although I like you know, the word pure. You know, that really covers to me. That covers a lot, essentially. And so the pure milk of the word. Now let me talk about, well, let's talk about the desire first of, word. For, first of all. All right. So desire the pure milk of the word. Now, let me get back on camera here. And uh, so we have to have a great desire for God's word. When I first got saved, all of a sudden the Holy Bible lit up. And I thought, this is all I need. I don't need to listen to anyone. No minister. Well, I, was, I was raised Roman Catholic. No priest. No religion. Okay. I just got that. You know, it, this is the rule of faith. And it was the old, it was probably this one here that was sitting in my room. Okay. All right. And boy, I tell you, I tell you, it lit up. Is this the end? Okay. I showed you this one time, some time back on a video. Look what I did. Okay. That four pages ripped a little bit. Okay. I wrote my notes in there with my terrible handwriting at that time and all. But what I felt was important to me. If you see a triangle, stuff like that, uh, my pastor, Pastor Bricker at the time, taught me how to write a textual sermon. And so if you see three words in a row, hey, that's pretty cool, or four, or five, it's a it's this, five, three, even two, that's fine. Uh, but textual also tends to flow into getting into deeper things, basically, what do those words mean exactly, and so on. And you get to what's called expository, which is very good. Uh, all types of sermons are pretty good, provided that they are led by the Holy Spirit. They're okay. Topical, they're fine. Biographical, they're great. Okay? But the Holy Spirit's got to be directed behind it. Be directed behind it all. So desire the pure milk of the Word. And the desire, with godly desire, you want to know more about the Word of God. Oh, do I have it? Is it this one here? Now, it's the other one I got, probably over there, because I, I had just seen a Bible. I was checking something out because I was getting, do I say, perturbed at some translation over, this is not even part of the message, over uh, Revelation 19.7. 19.7 of Revelation to say, his wife has made herself ready. And it doesn't matter if they take it from the oldest manuscripts or not. The oldest manuscripts say, his wife. And what, a, and a, now I'm skipping over to the next point of this thing here, okay? What some translations do is they smooth it out for us and they say, his bride. I looked that up, I have two helps over here. And the, the latest one indicates, well, the term bride is used, but way later on uh, for copying the text. Okay, way later on. If you go... It, uh, let's see, I don't know if Sinaiticus has that verse or not. But if you go back to the oldest manuscripts that we have, it says wife. <laughs> That's what God said. Okay, so you want, you, you want, you desire. So that's, this is what I'm doing here. What is, what was it? Okay, 
and it, it turned out wife. Does that mean anything? Yes. When God chose that word wife, it meant that this prophetic utterance was a done deal. Even though it's way in the future. He didn't say bride at that point. Bride comes later on. That's just fine. That's what was his choice. But at 19.7 of Revelation, it says wife. It's a done deal. It's the same thing over in Revelation 11. You got two witnesses that are on the face of the earth, probably during the Great Tribulation period, and they get they eventually get killed, <laughs> and then they get you know taken to heaven. But then there's a voice from heaven that says, "Now the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ." And when I first read that, I went, wait a minute, they these guys just got killed, and you say now? See, it's a done deal. They can do what they want to the church and all. And they could wipe out every true Christian they can find, keep the, the false ones. They could wipe out every true Christian they can find, they could wipe all the Jews out of the store. Listen, God's word is going to come to pass, okay? It, it will come to pass, all right? So you want to know, you desire the pure milk of the word. And what I was going to say about one of these Bibles over here, I forget which one it was. But I've told you before, it's good to read the Bible through and through and through. And when you get to that point whereby you've read the New Testament a few times, you start reading the Old Testament. And I saw that I, according to one of my records, I read the Bible through, I think it was, I forget what translation, oh, New American Standard, don't use that, it's not literal. But I read it through in a New American Standard. I think six times over the course of maybe seven or eight years. I had a little marketing and so on, so I kept reading that. The New American Standard is not liberal. Okay. You'll, so it may go back to, and it does use the, you could say, the more reliable witnesses and all that, but even when they do that, they're not being literal. If you're going to do that, be literal. This is what I say. And just don't change a word just to smooth things over. So here's the thing is, okay, you should have a burning desire for more of God's word, but also that which is pure, untainted, unadulterated. We talked about that to a degree in the last recording for Psalm 119. That will be released just tomorrow, basically. Uh, put up there on the website, sapphirestream.com forward slash life forward slash capital P, lowercase s, 119.html. That will come up there, and you will hear what I say about that. And we're not going to take any, I'm going to try to avoid taking any more time about talking about this stuff and all. But you do want pure, untainted, adulterated. The two tests that you want to do, perhaps, right off the bat. Number one, make sure you're not, you don't have a translation from some type of cult like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They got the New World Translation. They will really mess things up. But John... One, one should say the word was God, not a God. And then then you go to the, the tiny end of the spectrum. That's the big end of the spectrum. That's the big thing. That's the big thing right there, okay? Then you go to the tiny end of the spectrum where people say, well, it doesn't matter. I think it does. You go to Revelation 19.7 and it should say wife, okay? Now, so let me just stop right there with that. And to me... That's going to be kind of my test for now. In fact, I've been doing that, basically. I think that one time I was in a church somewhere, and they had the, the English Standard Version or something like that. They th they think that's cool, uh, the English Standard Version. So I checked out John 1, 1. Okay, that was okay. And then I checked out Revelation 19.7. No, no, they got bright. No, it should say why. That's, that's important because that is the tone of the Holy Scripture, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, for the most part, when it talks about prophecy, it's a done deal. Even, well, not even. I mean, Young, uh, Robert Young brought that out some time back when he was living and so on. His preface to his uh, his translation of the Old Testament and the New Testament. He, he, ta he talks about prophecy in the Old Testament. A lot of times, it's, it's like it's done. And it, it's spoken of as if it's in the past. <laughs> To us, okay? In the Hebrew mind, it was different. Uh, but to us, it sounded like it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's done. 
and it is in, in God's in God's realm. Okay, eternity. It's done. We're moving into that point in time, but to him it's done. All right, to him it's done, and uh, it is done. So, but we're just creatures of time, and we go from point A to point B, and but he's eternal. So that's why it's, it's it's done, it's done. So you want the pure, untainted, unadulterated word of God, and the word of God stuff is living and vibrant. Like I said, this lit up. This sat on my desk. I don't know for how long before I got saved, and I used it for, what should I say? I don't, I don't want to say too much about it, but you could say fortune telling, okay, along that line. I won't say how, and uh, the thing is, at least I had it, and maybe I would look at it now and then, and I really start looking at it when I start listening to Billy Graham. He's talking about Revelation, and uh you heard that story before. Read it four times, scared me to no end. Revelation, or Revelation four times, scared me. I wasn't ready. And then when the man I got saved, all of a sudden, like I said, it's like, like this just started glowing. It did really glow, but I mean, hey, hey, <laughs> the answers are here. Yeah, okay. The All I have to live by is that. I'm fine. Amen. All right. So, also aim for the only unwavering standard, which is the Word of God. You know, people want to change it so often. Okay. Uh, right now, do I have time? Yeah, I have time. Right now, some young people, and I'm not picking on anyone or what they said, and I do know there's some stories out there with different young people that I've heard, but. Uh, when our, our young people that grow up, as uh, some that are saved, as they mingle with the world, they, they take on some ideas of the world, and they don't know that they're doing that, and they don't realize that they need to study this closer. And also, they'll hear something like that, uh, Jesus never condemned homosexuality. He never said a word about it. Well, it doesn't look like, I mean, you know, it looks like that kind of in, you know, in the New Testament. But keep it. Who is Jesus? Who is, isn't he God in the flesh? So let me ask you two questions. Who wrote the Bible? That's the question number one. It's the Holy Spirit through, through the, the godly writers. So what does Paul, by the Holy Spirit, write over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, and particularly verse 7? What does he write? He says the homosexual, and I'm not picking just on the rest of them too, the extortioners, the thieves, the liars. He lists different groups. Okay, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, and so uh, that, that's what he says there by the Holy Spirit, and that's throughout the New Testament. And who is Jesus God? Now let's go to the Old Testament. Who do we have? Do we, who do we see? We well, some people say Jehovah and all. Who do we see in Genesis chapter 18? I think, I think it really starts over 17 too. Genesis 17, Genesis 18, but Yavah. You know, the, you know how do we know Yavah? Because in Genesis 18, Abraham refers to him as the judge of all the earth. Okay? And so... Who destroys Sodom and Gomorrah? Well, Yavah, Jehovah. That's not the same as Jesus. Oh, yes, it is. Same exact being, okay? So Jesus had a lot to say about any sexual sin, not just homosexuality, but any sexual sin. And so, yeah, that is, that is the case. Well, in the New Testament, God wouldn't be that way. You better read the book of Acts then, Acts chapter 5. Two people got killed because they lied before God. <laughs> Boom! And you might say, well, that doesn't happen. I think it does to a degree, but not, you know, it may not always be like that exactly, but it does to a degree. God just deals with people in his way as he sees fit. Different groups, different people, so on. And so some people do just die. And that he permits some to live on. And Perhaps the ones that he permits to live on, perhaps he's giving them mercy to repent. I don't know. So 
So it's, 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 that's in God's court. That's not mine. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> but it's the only unwavering standard. But the thing is, you want to desire this because you need to feed upon this all the time. All the time. And uh, someone once said to me, you know, you get busy now and then. And like the first two or three years I got saved, uh, they said their mother said that if you, you know, if you just read even one verse of scripture, that's better than none. Right? If you're too busy or you maybe don't understand stuff, whatever. If you just read one, that's better than none. Right? But let me tell you, it'd be good that you keep reading it over and over again and you get in that habit I did, whereby you read it over and over again through a course of a number of years. So like what? In maybe a course of seven years, maybe eight years, I read the Bible through and it's a bit lousy translation though. Uh, I read through maybe six or seven times. And you could ask Sister D here, I would you actually see me getting I still do that, but the thing is, I'm studying other things too here in regard to this. But you think you, you have to be hungry, okay? Now, another term in God's word for the word, you know, and let's put it this way too. Uh, before I say this, Jesus indicated somewhere, either in, I think it's probably in the Gospel of John. Uh, yeah, it's got, it would have to be the Gospel of John. He says, You search the scriptures and for eternal life, and they speak of me. They speak of me. So, uh, you have the written word, you have the incarnate word, which is in the written word throughout Old and New Testament. Amen? And you also have the spoken word to your heart. I don't mean prophets out there. I mean the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He says, well, you... Change your attitude, and you start praying for that person. How about that? Okay, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That's scriptural, right? It sure is. Uh, like I told you some time back, <laughs> at trouble waking up, you know, always slept in, and then when I got saved, and went to Bible Institute, you know, uh, what, first class was, what, 7.30? I don't what it was. <laughs> breakfast is at 7. Or, you know, so if you want a breakfast, you better get up, you know. And then, but what did they have? They also had prayer bands. They were not required, but God required of me. And he says, look, you're going to be a pastor, and you need to get yourself a prayer band. So I chose the North American prayer band. I, I think I had to get there 630. I had to get up early, buddy. It was to me. <laughs> At that time. Now we get up what? Usually what, a quarter before six. Usually, right? So it's okay. It's okay. Besides, old people take naps. Okay, now, <laughs> so we go from up now. I want to talk about eating like bread, okay? And back then, bread was like a mainstay and, and all. And let's see what Jesus says. And he talks about himself as bread. Over in John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Amen. But once again, a paragraph, a paradox. You, you still hunger for more Jesus and more of his word, right? That's good. But, you know, there's no other place that you want to go to because you know this is the best, you know? And so, so you, there you have it. I'm the bread of life. And he who comes to me shall never ever hunger, hallelujah. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. So, so this is true nourishment that we have from Jesus Christ himself. Oh, you ought to read chapter 6 of John if you haven't done so. Chapter 8, also all the chapters of John. Read the whole Bible. But, you know, he's being very clear, even though he is the Son of Man, even though he is all man, he's also all God. And some of his listeners, the Jews, and that would include his disciples too. Some of his disciples didn't like that, especially over in in John 6, I mean, we got to eat your flesh and drink your blood. And some just walked away after a while. This guy needs some medication. <laughs> they didn't have that stuff back then, I know. All right? They just walked away from Jesus. You know? Jesus turns to his main disciples. He says, you guys going to leave too? And good old Peter. 
He hits it on the nail. Who can we go to? You have the words of eternal life. Oh, wow, I love it. I got a whole message in that one. But that's wonderful. Uh, but let me go on. I'm about to digress again. Over on your screen, while we still have that uh, verse up for you, look at number three. That's where we're at now, realizing the goal. And so where do we get that from? We go back to our text, and that is going to be over, once again, in First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, the last line there, or not the last line, the last phrase, where it says that you may grow thereby. We're supposed to grow in the Lord. You just don't say this in his prayer, and you're good, you're fine, and, and all and uh, you go to church and all that. And it's good that you go to church. But no, we, we need to grow. And there's growth that we must have with godly change, with godly strength, with godly righteousness. Not the righteousness that people like to produce out there now. Oh, uh, well, let's talk, talk about abortion, for example. Okay, They can spiritualize that. The, the unsaved people can spiritualize that. They think that that's almost like, some, to some people, it's almost a sacrament. Because you're protecting the mother's life and all that, and you're protecting a, some person coming in the world that they're going to come into a bad condition or whatever. A Christian looks at it this way. God permitted that child to be created, at all, even if it's by rape or incest or something like that. And now, uh, now if the mother's life is in danger, I'd say the mom to pray about this. You know, that, that can happen. Some people don't realize that. It can, yes, it can happen. There's at least two conditions that I know of medically that uh, a mother's life is in danger because they are pregnant. And so that needs to be taken care of. And they need to pray about it. Uh, for all you know, you'd be prayed for and it's taken care of. Okay? But it's up to you. I'm not going to say for what you should do because, once again, I cannot have faith for anyone. I cannot be led by the Spirit for anyone else. You have to be led by the Spirit. Got it. All right, but in godly righteousness. So these people out there, you know, yeah. and then also in growth and purity, God's purity, of course, growth and holiness. Amen. Growth and holiness and growth into maturity. And that includes growing into his image. And you got to keep on growing unto eternal life. Now, our last scripture, which is kind of chunky, but that's okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about spiritual growth. And we're going to switch from the fact that we are depicted in God's Word sometimes as vines. All right, like uh, grapevines and all. So we're going to go there. And for that, we're going to have John chapter 15, verses 1 to 6. I am the tree vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me, do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. It sounds like uh, you can get saved, but then be damned afterwards. In other words, you can you can neglect your salvation. Okay. Jesus won't neglect you, but you can neglect him. Got it? You understand? It's 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 a two way street here. God, I, I put this up somewhere before, and God is not a tyrant. He's king. He's sovereign, but he's not a tyrant. He's not going to force you to stay safe. It's up to you, my friend. Oh, well, we no, it's up to God. But what does this say here? All right. Uh, first of all, every branch in me, verse 2. Well, if it says in me, I would think that means you've been saved, right? See, the, the whole world's not in Christ, you know. Uh, yeah. I got a friend now that goes to a, 
a bad, I'm not picking on Baptists, okay, they're, they're, they're good for evangelism and all that, but, uh, they, he goes to a Baptist church, and I told him, you know, Anyhow, I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on his passion. I said, you just bring him down here some more. Let me talk to him. Because <laughs> right here, I, I, right here, all right? Every branch in me, what does that mean? So let me ask you a question. Uh, the the Hindu out there in India or the, the Buddhist in Laos, I think they're in Laos and all Thailand, are they in Christ? No. They're not in Christ. You're not in Christ until you make Christ your Savior. So every branch in me that does not bear fruit, what does he do? He takes it away. And then if you stand, he prunes you. That's good. And we look. I, you know, I imagine there's some pastor out there, he had a whole series on this passage. Okay? <laughs> and you could. You really could. Maybe I should do that one of these days. Just take this. You keep standing on that for five months. Well, yeah, but we're going to take different aspects of it, too. Branch off from that, okay? You could do that. Now, I might just do that. All right? So, but every, you know, branch of it does not bear fruit, take away. And every branch in him, he, he purges it, he prunes it, and so on. That might bring forth more fruit. And then he says, look at this, abide in me. This is verse 4, and I in you. That, that you know, points out we had the option to abide in him. Why would he say that? He didn't say you're okay. Once you're planted, you're okay. You'll be fine in the end. All right? Yeah. He didn't say that. And so, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except to abide in vine, no more can you except you abide in me. Let's go on to verse 6. It says, if a man does not abide in me, what happens? If, you know, it's if you don't stay in Christ. If, watch the wording here. First of all, you got to be in Christ. And secondly, you got to stay in him. You got you have to abide in him. All right? So, if a man does not abide in me, what happens? He is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Sounds like hell once again to me. You know, it, there, right there, I think that whole section of John really lays it out for you. And so we want to continue growing unto eternal life because, listen, my friend, if you don't grow, if you don't grow, if you don't grow, you won't go. Right? You won't go. I said that one. Right? That's true. But we're not saved by works. No, we're not saved by our works, but we're saved by the life of Christ within us. And that indicates that we've got to grow in Him. Okay, we've got to keep on growing. Once again, John 15, 6. Yeah. If you don't stay in Him, man, you don't produce fruit. If you don't grow, you won't grow. So if you're saved, I hope that you desire the pure milk of God's word so you can grow thereby and that you develop into, you know, what, who Christ wants you to be, which is him. But perhaps you could say the gospel according to whatever your name is, Frank, or what, in, in, in a godly way. God, watch that too, okay? <laughs> Stepping off on a limb on that one, okay? But we, not everyone's the same personality, okay? And I told that to someone before. I know, uh, yeah, I can mention someone else out there that is a different personality and they, they, they preach the Word of God. That's okay. God, well, let's put it this way. Look in the New Testament. You have Paul. He's got his personality. You got Peter. He's got his personality. You got John. You got his personality. You got Timothy, right? And more. Okay. So it's not like necessarily cookie cutter, but there is a foundation. Okay, and God uses all types, you could say, along that line. But the point is, if you don't grow, you will not go. And so, desire the pure milk of the Word. Feed upon the Lord all of the time. And read the Word of God. Worship Him. You don't have to wait till Sunday or a midweek service to worship Him or even read God's Word. All the time, my friend. 
pray to him all the time. That's ongoing. We have a, a couple of videos, maybe not just a couple, a few videos on prayer. It's like breathing. You don't stop praying. You stay in communication with the Lord. And so you want to grow in the Lord. And friend, if you're not saved, okay, you're damned already. And I had to learn that myself. And don't like to hear that at first when Bob Whittick told me. He didn't come out and say, you're going to hell. I said to Bob, he told me something. I said, Bob, are you saying that I'm going to go to hell? And I like, I like what he said. I'm afraid so, Pete. I love that. I'm afraid so, Pete. I, I wasn't saved. I was angry at him at that point. How dare this little runt? He's like one year younger than me. He's smarter than me. But he, <laughs> he was. Probably still is. And, uh, but how dare this little you know, underclassman tell me I'm going to hell. And I didn't want to see him for a week. But after a while, I had to go back and hang out with him because, you know why? I didn't know it at the time. Something pulled me to him, but that something was a someone. That's Jesus. And friend, Jesus can live in your heart too. He can change your life. He can take you out of, from the realm of darkness and into his marvelous light. And instead of listening to the world slop out there, you can start feasting upon the pure milk of the word and grow in the Lord. Friend, I encourage you to come and fry us. Would you like to do so? Please pray this prayer, but mean it from your heart, not just now, but all of the time. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. I ask Christ to come in. I surrender all that I am him. I give all. Father, help me, Lord, to live for you, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, we have a recording for you titled Seven Years for Growth in Christ. You'll find that at archive.org. And so you type that title in, Seven Rich Growth of Christ, and also put in my name, M-A-C-I-N-T-A. -A. And you should find it right away, or maybe a search engine. You'll find it that way, too. And also, uh, we have the SF for our streams in various places. I don't know if it's on that page. We're about to show you a page here. But we have it in various places, SF for our streams. Another thing that we have for you is a series of lessons titled Basic Elements of Christianity at sapphirestreams.com forward slash BEC forward slash all lowercase letters. And they're free lessons. You don't have to log in. If you prefer the site to be secure, and it is, you just have to refresh it to that point. Basically, this link there, and you just click on that. And bingo, it's secure. It shows you this. It's already, it's already secure. Okay, you, you, so, uh, but it shows you that we do have a security certificate. It's free for us right now. Thank God. Amen? That's free. I, so I don't want to get back to that. I don't want to talk about that. that. Stuff like that drives me up the wall. All this technical stuff. Let me, let me go on. It just, I, that's the thing about God's Word. Let me get back on camera real quick. I want to say anything about God's Word, okay? All right. I thank God it's not complex like the United States tax code or something like that. I have another message somewhere else for uh, Revelation 10. This, this angel comes down from heaven. It's from heaven. I'll uh, read mine if I can find it. Uh, oh, oh, it okay. And he has a, a little scroll in hand. It says book in, in you know, some translation. But back then, there was like scrolls. Okay? A little scroll. Okay? And that speaks to me that the Word of God is very simple. It is. Okay. Now, there are deep things in it, but to get saved, simple. Simple. It's right there. Throughout God's Word. Amen. So, that's a message for another time. The first prayer request is from Ethiopia. On December 23rd, 2020, armed groups attacked several villages in western Ethiopia, killing 42 Christians and two pastors. Around 7,000 Christians were forced to flee the, the fighting and are now displaced. Frontline workers do not believe it will be possible for the displaced believers to return home in the near future. So they recently distributed food, aid to 1,153 Christians. These frontline workers request prayers for peace and provision for the many displaced believers. Please uh, do, do pray for these uh, believers who have been displaced. I pray that you might just be with them. Help them to continue on in their faith and to uh, know that in the end they will be with you. But Lord, I pray that you might provide for them. And I 
afraid that you might be released through this, that they might uh, be willing to continue. And I just ask these things in your name and for your sake. Amen. Nigeria, once again. Fulani, we got to pray for that country more and more. Fulani Mills has killed Melody Peters' husband and two children, one of whom was pregnant. Militants also shot Melody's 20-year-old son, William, in the head. But he survived his injuries. However, the pain is so great that his mother says he prefers to die. ICC covered emergency surgery to address his brain bleed. Brain bleed. Pray for William's mother, who is experiencing so much pain and suffering due to the loss of her family members and now witnessing her son's excruciating pain. Father, well, first of all, pray for the son, but if you touch his body, and heal him, Lord, meet that need. We pray, Lord, for the humility, uh, that you help our Lord, set your presence, and help our Lord to draw nigh to you. And Father, we pray just pour in your comfort by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. And just pour him in, Lord, and help her set your presence. We pray for the government of Nigeria that they would wake up and once again they, they would also be placed uh, as uh, a country in you know, the United States here as a, as a country as that is don't take care of their people like they should. And uh, they would take it off that list. But Father, you know what's going on out there. And Father, we pray that you just move upon the hearts of the Nigerian government. May they get saved. May the Muslims there get saved. We ask that you fill up in their hearts. Draw them to you, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So glad you could be with us. Come on back this next Sunday. But in the meantime, if you're in Cambridge, come on out tonight. 415 in Cambridge Street in Cambridge, Miller. And also this Thursday, we will continue our study at 7 p.m. Get there by way around uh, at least 20 before 7. Okay, because there's another group there we have to probably, like, you know, guide you as to where to go. And so there's two churches using that building on Thursdays. And so far, we're still blessed with Catacomb <laughs> Sanctuary, too. So we'll be there, God willing, this Thursday. And we, God willing, we, we will continue our study in Lamed, verses 89 on down of that stanza. So come on out for that. So glad you could join us. And may God richly bless you. And by the way, take this video, share it and all, and uh, just share it with friends and share it on timeline, stuff like that. You have a great day in the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. God bless you, every one of you. You who dwell in the gardens, the companions, listen for your voice. Let me hear it. Maranatha! 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 Maranatha. Maranatha.